Okay. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk about uh, more about arguments. Um, so I'm going to talk about three, uh, two main different types of arguments, deductive and non-deductive. And non-deductive arguments come in two forms. They come in the form of either inductive or abductive. And to, to illustrate uh, how they work, I'm going to use an example from a, a person or philosopher, C.S. Peirce, P-E-I-R-C-E, -E, Peirce. And probably most of you have never heard of uh, C.S. Peirce. Um, you might think, well, he's just, you know, a, a minor philosopher. Actually, b believe it or not, <clears throat> excuse me, um, actually, believe it or not, many people consider him the, the greatest uh, American philosopher of all time. He's definitely America's greatest logician. He's the father of uh, what's called pragmatism. And uh, he, he was a, a brilliant mind. Uh, he was a, 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 a practicing scientist uh, for 30 for 30 years or, or so at Harvard. Uh, unfortunately, the end of his life was very. Uh, he had a lot of difficulties and stuff, so he basically lived a very, uh, basically in poverty, towards the end of his life, and he was neglected towards the end of his life. But he's been his reputation has been um, <clears throat> has come back. <clears throat> And uh, he's now he's he's now been given his uh, due. Anyway, here's this example from uh, C.S. Peirce. It's a kind of a fun example, so I'm going to do it. Um, the first, this is a little argument here. The first premise is all the beans in the bag are white. All the beans in the bag are white. Uh, second premise: these beans are from this bag. Okay, that's uh, the two premises, and, and there's a conclusion that follows. If you think about it, it, you'll see it follows. It's obvious. All the beans in the bag. You have a bag of beans. They're all white. Uh, these you have some beans here. You take some beans out. These beans are from this bag. Uh, it follows necessarily that these beans are white, right? And that's that's called a deductive argument. Dedu it's deductive. I'll just put it here. Deductive, and it's a valid argument. If this is true and this is true, that has to be true. Okay. So that's the first one. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to just switch. I'll, I'll, just, I'll play around with the numbers. So uh, we'll keep all the premises the same, but I'll switch two and three. So now it'll be one, three, two, and we'll see what type of argument we have now. So one, uh, three, two. Well, actually, let me do it. I'll keep these numbers the same. One, two, three. Now we're going to do the argument one, three, two. And then we're going to do two, three, one. Okay? Okay, so one, three, two. So we're going to take uh, premise one and premise three will be the prem pre uh, premise, uh, statement one and statement three will be the premises. And the conclusion now will be statement two. So now the argument is going to be all the beans in the bag are white. So we have a bag of beans. They're all the beans in the bag are white, right? And the second premise is these beans are white. So we've got a bag of beans here. All the beans in the bag are white. We've got beans here. These beans are white. So from that, we're going to conclude that these beans are from this bag, okay? And this, and that I'll talk about what type of uh, argument that is in a second. Now we're going to do a third one. We're going to be, uh, we'll make statement one the conclusion. So now we've got the premises will be two, three, and one, two, and three. So these beans are from this bag. We've got some beans here. These beans are from this bag. Uh, the beans are white. And so we conclude from that. We, so we, we see, we know that there's some beans here. They're from this bag and they're white. So we conclude that all the beans in the bag are white. <clears throat> The first, the first one is deductive. It's a deductive argument. The first, all the beans in the bag are white. These beans are from this bag. These beans are white. Okay, that's a deductive argument because if this is true and that's true, that has to be true, right? Okay, so now the second one, let's do this one first. This one is going to be an inductive argument. So this is inductive. It's going to be an inductive generalization. We're going to generalize. So anytime you generalize, you, you have a sample of things that you're looking at, and then 
you generalize about all of them, that's a that's an inductive argument. It's called uh, univer uh, inductive generalization. So what we're we're doing, we have some we have some be <clears throat> beans. So we're looking at some beans, and they're from a bag, from this bag. <clears throat> Let's say we have a hundred beans, right? You see a hundred beans, and they're and they're and they're all white. Let's say they're all and they're uh, these beans are from this bag, and all the beans are white. So we've got a hundred beans. They're all from this bag. What can you conclude from that? You might conclude, wow, that's strange. I mean, all these beans are all white. I mean, there's no, there's no other different colors and they're from this bag. So uh, you might conclude, you know, it's probably the case that all the beans in the bag are white. Let's say you had 500 beans, they're all white. They're from this bag. Well, well, they're probably like, well, okay. All the beans, <clears throat> all the beans in the bag are white. <clears throat> You, you, uh, that's kind of the analogy would be like you you see you you've seen ten dogs they all bark you generalize all dogs bark all you've seen all these bag these uh, beans are all from this bag they're all white probably all the beans in the bag are white that's this one here so two and three are the premises a conclusion is one now we're gonna do the one three two so we've got all the beans in the bag are white. Imagine that you're a detective. Let's say you're trying to solve some crime scene, right? And for some reason, I can't, you know, some, for some reason, the beans are very important uh, to solve the, the murder, whatever. Maybe the, the, the person that committed the murder uh, had some beans or whatever. I, you know, you can make your own story up. But let's say that uh, you're a detective trying to solve a crime and the, and the beans are going to be an important part of the evidence. So the detective says, you know, the detective comes out trying to solve the crime. He sees some beans, right? These beans on the uh, on the table is uh, the scene of the crime. He says these beans are from this bag, and he says these beans are white, and they're from this bag. No, I'm sorry, this one, three, two. <laughs> I was doing this one. Uh, he says all the. He says he looks in the bag of beans. All the beans in the bag are white. So there's a bag of beans there. They're all white. And, he's, and then he he uh, he looks at some beans that are on the table. And he says, you know, these beans are white too. Now he's trying to figure out where those beans came from. Uh, and for some reason, you know, this is going to be important for solving the crime. So it, And he concludes that they came from the bag. These Nobody brought them in from outside, you know, that was possible. They came from this bag. These beans are white. So this here is abduction. Abduction is also referred to in many books as inference to the best explanation. You're trying to explain something. And what he's trying to explain in, in this case here, he's trying to explain how it's the case that since all the beans in the background, he wants to know where those, why are there white beans on the table? And he has to explain it. He doesn't know, you know, why, but he says he has to make a guess. And he and he concludes, it's probably because these beans are from this bag. Deductive arguments, as I, I've said in a previous lecture, give you 100% certainty. 100% certainty. This argument here uh, is... All the beans in the bag are white. These beans are from this bag. These beans are white. If this is true and that's true, this conclusion has to be true. Absolutely, with 100% certainty. That's a deductive argument. It's a valid argument. And what you, the, 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 the degree of certainty that you get in the conclusion is 100% certainty. In non-deductive arguments, the two main types are inductive and abductive. You're never going to get absolute certainty. You'll get at best probably true. So in this one here, you know, all the beans in the bag are white. These beans are from this bag. At the best you can say, they're prob it's probably the case. It's probably, two, three, one. It's probably the case that all the beans in the bag are white. The best you can say is probably. In this one here, where you're acting as a detective, you come in and you say, all the beans in the bag, you look at the bag, you look in the bag, all the beans in the bag are white. The, the beans on the table are, are, are white. 
and then you guess. And the best, you know, when you guess, the best you, it's going to be probably, right? I mean, you, never, you can't know for certainty. So he says that, you know, probably these beans are from this bag. And let's say, you know, the this is important for the uh, the, the murder case because they know that the, the this is the suspect had a bean a bag of white beans. Okay, you you can make your own story up. So this is uh, from C.S. Peirce, Charles Sanders Peirce, P-E-I-R-C-E. And one reason I gave this example is not only because it's an interesting and a fun example, and what I want all of you to do is to actually memorize all the three forms. So <clears throat> be able to go through the, the different ways in which this argument can be, because they're all the, the statements are all the same. So you have one, two, three, one, three, two, and two, three, one. And make sure you understand, you know, why this one is uh, deductive, why this one is abductive, and why this one is inductive. Okay, so that's your homework assignment. Um, I got a few minutes, so I want to say something. Oh, let me say something about C.S. Peirce, too. The reason, one reason I brought this up is not only because the example is fun, but just so you'll know who C.S. Peirce was. I mean, he, it's, he's one of America's greatest philosophers, definitely the greatest logician. Um, it's, you know, most people have heard of William James, John Dewey, but C.S. Peirce, uh, he knew them both. Uh, Dewey was his, uh, James was his friend and Dewey was his student. Uh, er, most people have heard of John Dewey and, and Henry and William James as, you know, most people have heard of those people. They're very famous. Very few people have heard of C.S. Peirce. So I wanted to, you know, introduce him to you. So we have a couple of minutes. So let me say one more thing. Um, about in deductive, let me say something about deductive arguments. Why it is the case that you get 100% certainty in deductive arguments. The reason is this, very simple. The information contained in the conclusion of a deductive argument is already contained in the premises. So when you look at any valid deductive argument, you look at the conclusion of a valid deductive argument and there's nothing new. You're not going to learn anything new. Now, you may personally, you know, you may not have rec recognized that this follows logically from th that. But if you were, if you're, if you were a computer, and you were thinking totally clearly, you would say, you would look at this argument and say, wow, of course, of course, these beans are white. Because all the information here is contained in these two premises. And if you go back and think about it, you'll see that that's the case. What happens in, in that's why you learn, that's why you have 100% certainty. But there's a cost to that 100% certainty. You, you know you're right with 100% certainty, but you don't learn anything. It's like saying, you know, the example I gave a long time ago, like, a, this is a circle, therefore it's round. Yeah, it, of course that's true. It's a, it's, a, it's a deductively valid argument, except you don't learn anything new, because you already knew circles were round anyway. Inductive arguments, at best you're gonna learn, it's gonna be probably true. The reason it's going to be probably true is that in the conclusion of an inductive argument, there is information contained that is not in the premises. So the conclusion goes beyond what is given in the premises. So you're learning something new. So, and, well, I mean, if, the inf if there's new information here that's not up here, <clears throat> at best, you're going to be able to say it's probably the case. I mean, for example, for a long time, every swan that Europeans saw was black, so people thought that, all swans, uh, they were white. They thought that all swans were white, you know, because every swan they saw. And, 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 but then when somebody went to Australia, they saw a black swan. So any generalization always, even if you think it's, you know, it's real, the conclusion is true, it, you don't know that. It, at best, it's probably true. And there's always a possibility that some future experience is going to, un, you know, negate your what you thought was true. Okay, so that's all for today. Um, that's, so today you learned a little more about logic. Thank you.